Liebe Zuschauer, herzlich willkommen zu NIRF TV. Nice to have you here, Matthew Dennis. Thank you for having me. Um, your film, Those Who Make Revolution, Half They Only Dig Their Own Graves, it's a long title. Yes. And <laughs> um, the title of the movie seems uh, a bit provocating. What can you tell us? Um, why did you choose that title? Um, uh, yes, I mean, so. I have to be uh, honest. <laughs> we didn't come up with the with the title. So, actually, well, we came up with the title, but it's a quote. So, this uh, sentence was uh, was said was said by Saint Just, who was a French revolutionary during the the French Revolution of 1789. Um, and uh, we we thought it was an interesting thing to introduce the subject matter of the film, which is. I think it's really a film about uh, idealism, um, and I think we're kind of wondering with the, with this film, like when you are fighting for a cause. Um, so, when are you doing too much? When are you going too far? And when are you not doing enough? We feel like this this uh, balance is very difficult to achieve, um, and so and so we we thought it would be interesting to have this yes this provocating title. Uh, kind of, uh, I don't know, launch this uh, this question, and also we were using it because the the film is kind of based, like the starting point for the for the film is a, a historical event that happened in Montreal in Canada in 2012. There was a, a big student protest movement at this at this time, and it's a student protest movement that was very strong for five or six months. That was very wide ranging and. Like it created a lot of hope in many people in in Quebec, uh, but eventually the movement kind of collapsed. And so I guess that the, the the title is uh, is uh, interrogating that aspect, which is like once you have done something halfway, what is what is left? Because what we were noticing is that a lot of people who had been involved in this movement. They tried to relaunch it a year after, and we like they, there, there was not the same strength, there was not the same energy because they had been so far one time, and then once you've been so far but you fail to achieve your goals, uh, what happens then? Are you taking a step back? Are you? And so the the title helped us kind of put all of these questions in place uh, even before the film begins. Mm -hmm. What was your motivation um, making this film realize? Um, uh, you, you told about the movements, and do you see any parallels to any other countries? Um, I, I mean, yes. Uh, obviously, there are yeah, there are many parallels in the sense that so again, so this film, the starting point is this student protest movement that happens in 2012, in the spring of 2012. So it's one year after the Arab uprising spring um, and I guess like one of the things that we were wondering about them that made, made us want to make this film is uh, I guess we we're <laughs> asking whether it is still possible to to bring about perennial social change in the world in which we're living is it possible to change things is it possible to revolutionize things even yet to, to an extent and Obviously, like the event that happened in, in, in Quebec didn't have the same scope as what happened in the Arab world in, in the spring of 2011, uh, or even you know, something which we referenced to in the film, which is the, the uprising that happened in Ukraine. Um, but the common, like the common thing that we see with all of these movements is that like, there's this part of society that, that, that says at some point, well, we haven't, we've had enough, and they're really like they're putting their fist on the table and they're saying, that's enough. And like the the world in which we are living and the view of the world that we are asked to um, endorse, basically, well, we're not having any of that. We're tired of that, and this is not the world. We think the world could be a different place and should be a different place. But the common, the common, uh, unfortunately, the common. Uh, result in all of these recent uh, social and political movements, uh, the end result has been really um, 
has not been very positive. You yeah. know, if you look at the situation in Ukraine right now, it's not exactly going great. And in the Arab world, it's the same thing. If you look at what happened in Libya or you know Syria, would be the best example. There's something there that there was a trigger there. There was uh, a part of society that was, uh, you know, rising up and saying enough and trying to bring about a better world. And this didn't succeed. And so, so yeah, so I guess there's this common, this common aspect of like this common question again, like how do we go about if we want to change the world in which we're living? And is it still possible to bring about like true uh, lasting perennial change? Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's a radical way for sure. And um, how did you realize to make it? Uh, with, with which uh, technical things did you realize this film? Because you are known as um, a director who makes um, very different kind of filmmaking. Would you tell us something about that? Uh, yes. So, well, I guess basically uh, the idea with this film. Um, so, you know, the four main characters in the film, they're very radical characters. So they're, they're four uh, young people who have decided that they want to live in a very different way than the way, you know, most of society lives. So they're, they're, they're having a very radical approach at how life should be, uh, should be lived and should be, uh, yeah, should be approached again. And so, I guess like it was very clear for us very early on that like you can't make a film about radical revolutionaries in a classical way. So mm -hmm. the form of the film had to be as radical as the, the characters were in the film. And so, you know, starting with this idea in mind, we thought, well, so basically we thought everything goes. And the film, like obviously it's a it's a reaction to the the the, um, the to the characters that we have written, but it's also a reaction to the way uh, cinema is made currently. And so we were kind of seeing that, you know, film has become more of an industry than it is a, an art. And by making this film, we were and uh, we were reacting to that because it feels like there are so many formatting forces like there are so many things that you're not supposed to be doing anymore like our film is you know more than three hours long yeah. uh, so everyone was telling us that you know you can't do that nowadays it's impossible because the film will not have a like who will go see a three hour long film and you know so all of these things that you can do where the film opens up with the you know it's an the there's an overture in the film so there's five minutes of you know, black leader with music only. Um, there's text that appears on screen. We have different uh, uh, formats with which we, you know, different aspect ratios. Um, there's there's dance. There's theater. There's like poetry in the film, and you know, and there's I guess there's a there's a non-conventional narrative structure to it as well. And these are all things that you're not supposed to be doing nowadays if you make a film. And I guess the question we were asking is, well, why not? Like, why do we, you know, impose all of these roles on ourselves, uh, all of these rules on ourselves? Mm -hmm. And we were trying to make a film that was going to be free. So we wanted to kind of um, regain that freedom that we feel that we should have as artists. So I don't know if that answers your question, but... <laughs> The young persons. Um, uh, how was the casting of the persons you've chosen? Yeah, uh, so the casting was, um, I mean, so yeah, we have four main characters. Uh, all of these, uh, all of the actors are either, so one of them is was completely, had no prior film experience, and three of them were out of theater school. So basically, uh, our characters are like, you know, 25 years old around this, this age. And so we wanted to have actors who had the same age. And we wanted to find actors who were close to the, the roles that we were asking them to, to portray. And so, you know, these are, again, radical characters. They're like uh, politically committed. They're uh, quite, yeah, quite radical in their approach of to political commitment and so we needed to have actors who kind of had that in them and so we we did 
we did the auditions and so we saw like all of the young actors you know that are living or working in Montreal and you know out of them a few like there were it was evident like it was an evidence when we saw them and the interesting thing about that is that even though the characters were like they were pretty well defined and well written well they were written uh, in the script and all that but all of these actors I think what makes them so great <laughs> with all the objectivity that I can that I can have but what makes them great is that they took these characters but they brought a lot of themselves to them so there's a big part of each of these characters which we could never have written mm -hmm. because it was something that they were uh, all of them individually carrying with them so would you say that that is an important fact to make the film um, very impressive to bring a lot of it yourself Yes. Or the experiences? Yes, absolutely. I think like if an actor is just being a shell, you know, like acting something, I think it will show. Like you, you will not believe it. And in this case, these actors were, yes, portraying characters. It's not sp strictly them, but they're bringing a lot of them in their characters. And I think that makes it more powerful and more... Uh, uh, the characters become alive, mm -hmm. you know, really. And so, yeah, and, there, and, and then so... Three of these actors had training and were coming out of theater schools, but I, I, I'd like to mention, if it's possible, the fact that yeah. there's one character, in, so there is a transgender character in the film um, who is played by uh, Gabriel Boulian Tremblay. And uh, so, you know, we wrote this in the script. Obviously, there was a transgender character, and one thing we kind of were adamant about is that we didn't want to, for example, you know, cast a man who would wear a wig and makeup and like we wanted to have an actual transgendered person. And there are not so many transgender actors, at mm -hmm. least in Montreal. And so we had to really to go out and try to, you know, find people. So we met with a lot of people and we auditioned non-professional transgender actors. And we were lucky enough to, you know, to find Gabrielle, who's like, it's her first ever Uh, working like uh, acting experience be it in film or theater like it was her first experience and she had a very demanding role but I think she did an extraordinary job uh, at you know I don't know at, at, at doing this uh, like portraying this character she was extraordinary con and especially considering the fact that she had no prior experience would you say that that in the end was was uh, really good to having no experience I think the difficult thing about, you know, I, I don't necessarily have a preference for working with non-professional actors or professional actors. Generally, like personally, I've worked much more often with professional actors. The only thing that sometimes I find is problematic is that if you have a mix of professional and non-professional actors, it's not the same kind of acting. It's a different uh, expression, I guess. And it's problematic when you see that that uh, that gap or that shift between different kinds of actors but in this case i think gabrielle was like kind of got into like a level that was the same as the professional actors and so in this in this sense like you can't really say that she's a non-professional actor you can't really tell by watching the film i think um, which says a, a lot about her ability uh, but that being said i certainly think that again if we had you know she she is a transgender person she was in you know she was transitioning as we were doing the film and so i'm sure this was bringing you know this was bringing a lot of the to the character like she it was bringing a lot again of of stuff to the character or emotion to the character that we as person who are not going through this you know to the transition process as as writers and filmmakers mm -hmm. Like it's not something we can fully understand, obviously, because we're not going through it. And so I think in that sense, being specifically in that stage of her life while she was making the film, I think, yes, it was a definitive advantage and it brought a lot to the film. Um, you also won an award for this film and it is the best Canadian film at Toronto International Film Festival. Mm -hmm. So I would say you are very proud of it. Uh, yes, of course. We were very happy with, uh, with that. Uh, We were very happy with that, yeah. Especially since uh, it's a very, it's a very. So this film is very controversial, I guess. Uh, it's definitely not for all, for all types of um, audiences. Mm -hmm. 
And when we had, so the, f the film had its world premiere in the Toronto Film Festival. Um, and the premiere was in a, in a beautiful theater, <laughs> downtown Toronto, which is a, like a 1,100 seat theater. So it's oh, yeah. huge. Um, but obviously, like, the people were coming in to see that film since it was the world premiere. You know, that's the, the good thing about film festivals. If you haven't, you haven't heard a lot about the films. So you go in and you kind of, you know, you try, you, you see if you like it or not. But our premiere was really, uh, I don't know, chaotic to some extent. Like 500 people walked out of the theater wow. angrily. Like they were <laughs> cursing at us and like screaming at us. And like there were people in the, in the, the theater who were cursing at the people leaving. And there were like, I don't know, like arguments and battles and okay. <laughs> while the screening was <laughs> happening. So it was a very, very, stressful and like difficult screening to go through especially like as a filmmaker you're it's the first time you show your film and like for a moment i thought maybe there will be no one left at the end <laughs> but it wasn't the case and the people who stayed were really enthusiastic about it and like we had i don't know we had a standing ovation at the end but still it was very contentious and so to see that there was a jury who thought the film had you know enough value to give us the main award there it was extremely um uh, an extremely good feeling to have mm. because we thought we've been really, I don't know, we tried to make this film with all of our integrity and we put everything we had in it. And to see that, you know, some people really hate it, it's one thing, like we're living with it, but to see that, you know, some other people are really embracing it and think it's a, it's a, it's a, uh, a pertinent piece of work that that was a very good feeling to have. I think it could be um, the reason because of uh, the topic of the film. Would you can you explain the reason why so many people were acting like that, um, not not wanting to see to see the film? Because, yeah, I think there are, well there are many things. So uh, obviously, like the film has a very uh, particular form, you know. The film starts, there's a five minute overture, uh, which is only music and there are no images. And so from the first, you know, from the opening of the film, you're either, you know, you kind of have to position yourself. So you're either in or out. And, mm -hmm. you know, in the first five minutes of the film, at least 50 people walked out. <laughs> so because they were, they, they, they could not, I don't know, they could not accept that a film starts this way. Uh, so, and there are many other moments in the film, like there's an intermission in the film also, and the intermission is four minutes long and it's played out on, like there's black metal music, so it's very, I don't know, it's... Darky. It's relatively aggressive, I yeah. guess. And so again, like, <laughs> many people walked out there. Uh, some people were shocked by, you know, there's a lot of, there's no, uh, I don't know, there's no sex scene in the films in the film there's no sex scenes in the film but there's a lot of nudity some people were put off by that some people and that was actually one thing that i thought was really troubling is that as i said we have a transgender character in the mm -hmm. film and you know there are scenes where we see her naked mm -hmm. and that really like some people when they saw that stood up and left which i thought was extremely I was really offended by that. And also, you know, Gabrielle, the actress, was in the, the, the theater while this was happening. So, and they knew that she was there because we went, you know, in the front of the theater at the beginning and we introduced the film. And so, so all of these things, I think, were really challenging for some members of the audience. So it's all of these reasons. And yeah, and, you know, it's three hours long. Some people cannot deal with that. And, but I think the people who are into it, they're very much into it. And the people who are not into it are very much not into it, <laughs> and which is fine because at the end, you know, I would rather have a film that, you know, that provokes intense and extreme feelings than a film that leaves people indifferent. And in this case, like no one was left indifferent mm -hmm. for sure. And the heater, like some of them really hated the film, and I'm fine with that, you know. Mm -hmm. And uh, some other people really loved the film and. For sure. I'm thankful for that. <laughs> Otherwise, you wouldn't uh, win this award. Um, I would ask a question about um, your way of making films um, compared with other directors. What differs you from other directors? Everything, I guess, <laughs> because 
you know, directing a film is extremely personal. So, you know, give me, you know, this, give, give, give one script to 15 different directors and every one of them will make a different film. Um, so yeah, but that being said, I don't know, like, I guess in terms of what is uh, maybe like, uh, you know, some of the defining traits of my work, I'm definitely, I've always been interested in, in making work that is uh, based on reality to some extent, you know, so this film, the starting point is, is based on an event that actually, actually happened in Montreal in 2012. My previous film was based on a historical fact that happened in Quebec again in 1966. Um, so I like to work, like the work that I do is is often based in reality. Um, I guess I guess you know uh, you know what else? It's very difficult to uh, define I my own work. I think it's a lot. <laughs> <laughs> but um, yeah, I would like to thank you for being here mm -hmm. for sharing your um, experiences about the film as a filmmaker and. Hopefully see you next in two years again in here. I would I would love to be back. With another film. <laughs> Liebe Zuschauer, schön, dass Sie dabei waren. Vielen Dank fürs Zuschauen.